Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over a very popular quantitative strategy, and that is arbitrage. Now, arbitrage is actually everywhere. It's not just related to the financial equities or commodities market. Arbitrage is as simple as essentially finding a price discrepancy between two different ecosystems where these ecosystems are places where you can trade goods or services. So a real neat example on what arbitrage is to say, let's say that you go to Walmart and let's say you purchase a box of Expo markers, let's say it's like it's a 12 pack and say it's like six bucks, right? And perhaps you want to go to eBay and then you know maybe sell for a market up approach. And then so let's say each of these markers are now like a dollar. They sell them a dollar each on eBay. So if you successfully sell all 12 of your markers for a dollar each and you bought all of your markers for six dollars in total, you just made six dollars in profit and that was a form of retail arbitrage and a more complex form of arbitrage is essentially where you purchase products from let's say china via alibaba and then once you purchase those products they are shipped over to your area and let's say it's the united states then you go ahead and sell those products on amazon at a markup rate and that is also another form of arbitrage and many people have made a lot of money so even though there are a ton of different arbitrage strategies out there the law logic is actually still the same. You are trying to capitalize on the inefficiencies of different markets, and with those inefficiencies is your profit. So in the stock market, contrary to the efficient market theory, prices of various assets in different markets are frequently priced differently. This is where arbitrage comes into play, where you can capitalize on the inefficiencies of different assets that are being traded on different exchanges. We'll be going over a very high level overview of a pure arbitrage strategy, capitalizing on the inefficiencies between different exchanges that are trading in cryptocurrency. So let's say I'm trading in two different exchanges, exchange A and exchange B. Knowing that there is a difference in trading volumes in bids and asks, I can actually capitalize on the closing prices within, let's say, a few seconds within the same exchanges. So why should I buy Bitcoin at 60,000 in exchange A when I can buy Bitcoin at 59,000 in exchange B? And since I know the difference is actually $1,000, I can therefore capitalize on those differences and thus make a profit. Now, of course, there are some nuances that are involved with this particular strategy, and I'll go over some of those nuances in the following coding demonstration. So let's get to it. Okay, so the primary difference between the cross-exchange arbitrage and the retail arbitrage is that the cross-exchange arbitrage or any arbitrage related to the financial markets is that speed is essential. If you have the fastest computer, then that will provide a huge edge over your nearest competition. And this is a huge, huge market. And there are only a few big players because they have the best algorithms, the best um, hardware associated with their code. They have the best coding practices, so on and so forth. But nonetheless, I'll provide you the theoretical approach in some sort of application in a way uh, to just go through the idea of this arbitrage. So basic idea here is that we have two different exchanges. So have exchange A and exchange B. Uh, in this case, it could be like um, Coinbase and Gemini. We have these two different exchanges, but they trade the same cryptocurrencies. And let's say we have asset A, they're, you know, they're being traded on the same exchange but they're priced differently. And so the primary difference between these two is that I would want to essentially purchase assets A inside of exchange B, and I would want to sell those assets in exchange A in order to capitalize on that $1 spread. So it really depends on the, how much volume is actually being traded here too, uh, but this can scale very, very well. So if there's like thousands of uh, assets A being traded in exchange A and exchange B, and there's a difference in spread consistently of like, let's say $1, you know, that you will essentially make thousands upon thousands of dollars, depending on however many of those assets are actually being traded and are ready to be arbitraged. All right, so with the theory out of the way, let's have some form of an example. And note that this is not a production level example, partly because I would need a various keys and I would need like a developer's license. If there's even licenses are related to that and an actual trading example. Uh, nonetheless, I essentially just got uh, two different 
um, data sources, and these data sources came from Reuters and Gemini, of where I'm essentially just going to get the price points from each of these uh, exchanges, even though you can't really trade Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies on Reuters right now. Um, it, is, it does provide a snapshot as to what the actual value of that specific coin was traded at, the closing, the volume, so on and so forth. So if you really want to you know, look further into that, there are so many APIs with you know many popular exchanges. So highly recommend you check those out. If you want to do it programmatically, this is how you're gonna to have to do it with the arbitrage. You're gonna to have to you know get their API. You have to feed the live data into your program in order to generate the results that you need to do in order to create those signals and execute on those signals. So these are a list of some of those APIs. Highly recommend that you check those out. So anyways, this is what the Gemini and Reuters data set looks like. Uh, the Gemini, I was just like going through the historical data and they have like an updated uh, data set on some somewhere on their homepage. I'll put that on screen. Uh, but yeah, so it provides you the, the dates, the Unix timestamps. Date is in UTC. I had to convert that to Eastern time, which is um, the Eastern seaboard of the United States. And you know, the time it was traded, this is military, so 7.04 p.m. And in this case, this is a Bitcoin because it's the biggest coin out there. It then provides you open, high, low, close, and volume. Volume is essentially the um, number of coins traded and just divide that by two uh, to you know, have a sense as to how many coins are actually being bought or sold on that counterpart. Uh, Reuters is a little bit weird. Um, so they don't actually allow you to trade in cryptocurrencies, but they do provide a price chart and historical data on what those um, closing prices actually look like. So uh, I just went ahead and I just scooped up that data and downloaded it over here. Um, so this is just a simple example. So think of, of Reuters as an actual exchange that you can actually purchase uh, cryptocurrencies, even though in reality you can't, um, but the, the logic is still the same. So just consider this Reuters data set as a different exchange. Okay, so just for you know, uh, for my sake, for <laughs> efficiency's sake, uh, let's look at this. 704, 2021, November 20th, the opening price of Bitcoin was $59,710. Um, notice that this price is actually not the same on the Reuters. And let's just consider the Reuters to be a different exchange. And this was 59,692. So there is a difference in prices at the exact the exact same price or the exact same time uh, point. And I already did the calculation over here, but that was the difference of $17.2. And that's approximately 0.0286% of the actual price. So in an ideal world without any fees or taxes and any of that, you could potentially have made $17.2. But you know, that's often not the case because for instance, if you are trading on Gemini or on Coinbase for that matter, um, some of these charges can be up to 2%. And I included a chart um, all the way down here. We can take a look at that further. Um, however, you know, the, the transaction fees are just astronomical, especially if you're trading a low amount of capital. And of course, there are different exchanges with different, uh, I guess, transaction fees. So you would definitely want to incorporate that into your algorithm when you are trying to calculate the spread and to find out whether or not it's even worth trying to capitalize on that given spread. Okay, so let's go ahead and start plotting some stuff. So I went ahead and I just, you know, just plotted the uh, the opening prices within the two different exchanges. Uh, and just notice that, you know, sometimes uh, Gemini is a little bit higher valued, or maybe it's sometimes uh, higher value and lower valued. And, you know, it sort of just fluctuates. And so notice that the lines are not identically like on top of each other. Uh, and this prevents an opportunity for the trader. So those are just the opening prices. And let's look at the spread. What does that spread look like? So this is what that looks like. So notice that many of the, you know, the spreads is like less than $100. In fact, that's what most of those spreads are. And in fact, uh, due to the high trading fees, it's actually not worth trading at like $100. I think it's like at the max you might be spending like 2%. Um, uh, on like a like the amateur Coinbase app, for instance, but if you're on the pro version, uh, you might be 
spending like maybe close to like 1% or 0.5% on the actual trading value of your coin. So uh, you would have to play up those numbers. It is variable, uh, but sometimes there is a way to, you know, profit on that. And let's go ahead and move myself up here. And yeah, so in an imperfect environment, let's see how much money we would have made if we don't had to pay, you know, any transaction fees. So I went ahead and I just summed up the differences or summed up the entire spread. And that amounted to close to $39,000. However, we know that that is just not the case, partly because of the transaction fees. And so let's go ahead and calculate, you know, whether or not we might actually be making any money on a particular trade. So I, I just went ahead and, you know, did some subtractions here and there. So this is the spread and this is the amount of money that you would be purchasing or uh, well, the amount of money that you would be spending in order to execute that given trade. So my thought process here, this is 0.2%. This is essentially, I just use the Coinbase average. So if you had one Bitcoin, right, on two different exchanges, so that's close to, let's say like $100,000 roughly. Uh, so I just took the average, you know, 0.2% if I had, you know, $100,000 worth of capital. Uh, I took the average on the maker and taker fees and I just multiply that by the sum of two different Bitcoins on the separate exchanges. And that's how you would calculate how much transactional taxes you would have to pay so that is that and notice that you know right out the get-go the total tax is a lot more than a spread so therefore you would not be actually executing on that potential trade um so i went a step further uh this is just like you know a step for the ex the final execution part and just to determine whether or not you should be purchasing from the gemini exchange or the Reuters exchange is that, you know, let's say that the Gemini value is greater than the Reuters value, then the value of zero, which I so conveniently had that if then statement over here, um, like I would want to trade on the, I would want to essentially just go ahead and, you know, buy the Bitcoin on the Reuters exchange and sell it on the Gemini. So if there's a value of zero, then I would do it in that specific order. And if there's a value of one, I'll do the opposite. So I'll go ahead and purchase the Bitcoin on Gemini and then sell it on Reuters if it's a value of one due to the price differences on the two different exchanges. So that is the order in trades that you would want to take into consideration. So let's go a step further and see whether or not we want to execute on that trade. And I just went ahead and did a very simple if then statement. Uh, essentially, if my total tax is less than the difference, I'll go ahead and execute on that trade. So um, the values that I'm looking here is a value of zero. So I had no idea what my zero values were and I just checked out how many trades would actually be executed in one-ish day. Notice that this is like on a minute data and this is a little bit more than 24 hours of just straight up trading. So there's only one opportunity for me to trade. So let's go ahead and take a look at that observation. So right here, notice that there is a huge difference actually there is a close to five hundred dollars worth of difference between the two exchanges and the total tax here would be you know 235 and then you can you know just calculate how much profit you would have made on that one trade in 24 hours boom 255 dollars so in 24 hours you could have made 255 dollars and so not a bad not a bad trade in one day, especially if it's if it's all being automated. Um, so let's go ahead and look a further. Uh, notice that the volume here was 27, roughly. So that's pretty much 13.5 Bitcoins that were bought and sold at the same time. So the actual profit, the total amount of profit, if you were to arbitrage on that one specific, I guess in this case, minutes, uh, you would have made that amount of money. So $3,482. That's that's quite a bit. Um, but yeah, fees will vary between exchanges. Uh, so I just use Coinbase, which is the most popular, one of the most popular exchanges out there. And notice here that if you have more capital, you don't, you know, like you don't, get charged anything for maker fees and uh, you'll get charged even less for taker fees. And one of the primary differences between the taker and maker fees is that you can think about it like this. Uh, so if you're placing a trade or like an order to purchase something like a Bitcoin on you know a crypto exchange and you're uh, placing it at market order, you want your order to be immediately fulfilled. 
you are going to be paying a taker fee. However, more or less, if you purchase a Bitcoin, uh, but you put a specific dollar amount uh, that you are limiting the amount that you'll be purchasing for this Bitcoin. And so your order is essentially like in limbo until someone matches that trade, you could be putting in a maker fee. And I included a quick definition down here on what that might entail. I hope that this really helped you on your decisions on whether or not arbitrage is the, probably the right fit for you, or if it's a brand new technique, I hope that you learned something new. And if made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.